Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hi, Eva. Hi. Hey, look at that smile. Okay, today is Ju Ju I mean, Ju <laughs> July 1st. Yeah, yeah, yeah. July 1st already, 2020. And uh, today is the feast day of St. Junipero Serra. Okay, the... Uh, the priest who um, initiated the foundation of uh, missions, churches, and communities, new Catholic communities in California. Um, it is a good day to do reparation also for the uh, atrocities being committed towards um, landmarks of uh, national importance to the United States, in particular, the uh, desecration of uh, St. Tony Pedro Serra's own statue in San Francisco and some other places. So today we can remember uh, these occasions with a little bit more of um, uh, devotion to the saints, particularly to St. Tony Pedro Serra, whose feast we celebrate today. Okay, so let's uh, read from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 8, verses 28 to 34. When Jesus came to the territory of the Gadarenes, two demoniacs who were coming from the tombs met him. They were so savage that no one could travel by that road. They cried out, What have you to do with us? Son of God. Have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? Some distance away, a herd of many swine was feeding. The demons pleaded with him, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. They came out and entered the swine, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea where they drowned. The swine herd ran away. And when they came to the town, they reported everything, including what had happened to the demoniacs. Thereupon, the whole town came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to leave their district. So I want you to pay attention to some of the uh, very important and very revealing uh, words in this gospel. For starters, let's consider, what have you to do with us, Son of God? See, the devils asking Jesus, what have you to do with us, Son of God? The devils recognize who Jesus is and was at that time. They know. Okay? They know who Jesus is. And there's no denying. There's no denying that the devils, Satan and all his cohorts, the devils, understand that Jesus has power over them. That is why their question to him was, well, what are you going to do with us? Okay? And, and look, look at the follow-up question. Or the follow-up to this question. Have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? Before the appointed time. What does that mean? It means the devils recognize the fact that time will come that they will actually be tormented. That they will actually be completely obliterated, completely, uh, 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 um, what's the word, defeated, that Jesus will triumph, that the Son of God, the kingdom of Jesus Christ, on earth and for all eternity, will triumph over the devil. And the devils are just waiting for that appointed time. See, it's as though 
it's as though God allowed them to unleash their, their, their evil work in the world, okay, as a way of, uh, well, testing mankind. But they all know. They all knew from all eternity because our Lord already said so, right? I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, and she will crush the head of hell's serpent. See, it was very clear from the very beginning of creation that God will triumph in the end. There will come a time of redemption. There will come a time when the kingdom of God is going to triumph over the kingdom of Satan. Uh oh. And the devils knew this. And so they were, they were asking Jesus, have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? God will prevail. But God doesn't have to wait. And we don't have to wait for God to prevail until the end of time. We, we, if we are, if we are faithful, if we are wise, if we are using our heads, we can make God prevail in our lives now. Now. We don't have to wait for any future time which is more favorable, for any uh, 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 a time when we have no more cares and worries, and, but, but just think about God. Uh, for a time when we are not any more busy with our professional tasks or, or our school work or whatever it is that we, we want to do on earth. And then that time we devote to, okay, now it's time to think about God. Uh, no. The time to think about God, the time to make God have dominion over our souls and our minds and our hearts and our bodies is now. Now. Now is the auspicious time. Okay? We should not allow the devil to get the better of us. So we have to ask ourselves, whose side are we going to be on? Right? If we already know that God is going to triumph anyway at the end of time, well, whose side do we want to be on? Do we want the devil to get a piece of us now, only to know that eventually the devil is going to be defeated? Because if we allow the devil to have a piece of us now, like they did with his demoniacs, they're just destroying themselves for no good reason, no good purpose, right? Because in the end, God will always triumph. In the, in, in, in here we see very clearly in this whole story that God will always triumph. The devils will never win. And look at the, look at the, I might want to say, stupidity of these devils. <laughs> it's a, they, they ask Jesus, well, if you're going to drive us out, which we think you are anyway, uh, you know, uh, uh, put us in the swine, put us in those pigs. And, uh, you know, that's, that's better for us than, 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 the, than the completely being obliterated in, in this world. And our Lord said, okay, go. Why didn't our Lord think twice about the swine? Eh? About the pigs, the herd of pigs, because you know what? Uh, in, in the in the community of the Jews anyway, they didn't like pigs. So the Gadarenes must be a non-Jewish community for them to have for them to have uh, uh, herds of pigs, because the the Jews don't eat pork. Okay, uh, so in other words, as far as the Jews are concerned, these animals are unclean. So okay, between the devil and Animals that are considered unclean <laughs> doesn't make a difference for Jesus. So he said, okay, go. Okay? But look at the significance of this also is this. Anything that the devil touches, they destroy. Whether it be the human soul or an animal herd that is regarded as unclean. What happened to the pigs? They ran down to the sea and perished and died. Because that's the effect of the devil. Anything the devil touches gets broken, gets destroyed, perishes. So why allow the devil to touch you? Why even give the devil an inch 
of opportunity, a window of opportunity to touch you, to get into you and get into your soul. Hey, doesn't make sense. It's not going to help. The, 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 the temporary pleasures that we think we can avail of in this world, uh, the nice, funny things that the devil wants to show us, the shiny objects, the little pleasures here and there that the devil dangles in front of us in order to lure us to sin, are not worth it. They're not worth it. The devil will destroy us the way the devil destroyed these demoniacs, the way the devil destroyed the herd of pigs, the way the devil destroys anybody. It is not worth it. It is not worth it. It is not worth it. Just like the swine, they drown. Because that is what happens to people who get so overcome with temptations and with sin. They drown. They drown in the quagmire of sin. And it's very difficult to recover from it. So, hi. <laughs> so, lesson here for all of us is don't even allow the devil to get any closer to you. Don't even allow the devil to get any closer to you. Fight against every possible temptation. That is why we need to struggle. That is why this world is a struggle. It's always a fight. There's always a fight to get rid of temptations and never allow the devil to have whatever influence it wants to have on our souls. So today, today let us, let us remember, let us remember during the feast day of St. Honepero Serra okay, to uh, always fight against temptations and never allow the devil to get the better of us. One other thing I'd like to request everybody to pray for is uh, for the repose of the soul of Monsignor George Ratzinger, the uh, brother of uh, our beloved Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. Um, Monsignor George passed away today, July 1st, in Bavaria. Um, let us keep him in our prayers. And also let's keep uh, uh, Pope Benedict in our prayers that he might uh, find consolation for the loss of his brother. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.